Resupplying on the John Muir Trail can be a little challenging compared to some of the other trails out there in the country. So what are the options that you have out there? What is the cost associated with those options? And what are my recommendations? <laughs> Well, welcome back hikers to another edition of my John Muir Trail post through hike videos. As I said earlier, I'm going to be focusing on resupplying today. Now, after I got my permit and after you probably get your permit, one of the first things that you might start looking into is how to resupply, where to resupply. Now, I was southbound going on the JMT, which your resupply options are going to look a little bit differently whether you're heading southbound or whether you're heading northbound. Southbound, you have the most practical places to pick up your resupplies during the first half of your journey and the most resupply points. Opposed to heading northbound on the JMT where you are going to be hiking quite a few miles going over a pass to be able to get to a trailhead to hitch into a town to resupply. But more on that, I want to talk about resupplying heading southbound and of course again northbound is going to be flip-flop to that. So coming out of Yosemite Valley the first resupply point that you're going to hit is Tuolumne Meadows. Tuolumne Meadows is 23.1 trail miles in on the JMT. You'll hit the junction and it's under a half a mile walk on Highway 120 to be able to go down to the camp store and post office. Now, this is a post office, which means you don't have to pay any money to pick it up, which is really nice, especially when I talk about the cost of picking up packages along the way. There are two different post offices in Yosemite. One is in Yosemite Valley. The other is in Tuolumne Meadows. It's important that you state on your package it's going to Tuolumne Meadows or it might end up at Yosemite Valley, and that's not going to help you at all. Now, one of the things that I would have done differently on my through hike and what I'd recommend here is not carrying so much food during the first 23 miles of your journey because half of those 23 miles, you are climbing about six to 7,000 feet out of Yosemite Valley. Every single ounce, every single pound is going to feel a little bit heavier. And if you send a flat rate box, which is what I recommend and what I would do to Tuolumne Meadows as your first resupply, and you are going to enjoy those first 23 miles so much more, especially if you plan on doing things like clouds rest, maybe making a side trip to Half Dome, although you're not gonna be carrying all of your food and items there, but it just makes for a lot more enjoyable hike uh, coming out of Yosemite Valley. Now, Tuolumne Meadows also has a grill there, so you can grab something to eat, and that can make up for one of your meals. When I ate there, I ate so much that I had a very, very light dinner my first night out of Tuolumne Meadows. Now, I did say that there is a camp store here that's connected to the post office. They're all in one area along with the grill. Now, the camp store is accommodating to quite a few things that you would probably eat out there on the trail, but the food's going to be a little bit more expensive. And since you don't have to pay to pick up a resupply there, I would just send a resupply point there instead of trying to rely on resupplying in the actual camp store. Now, a couple other things to note here. There is no hiker box here, like you'll see at other resupply points, that you can scrounge up scraps and other meals and use those as part of a resupply. You're not going to find that here. There are bear boxes that you'll see when you stroll into Tuolumne Meadows. Some folks have tried to drop their food resupply point in those bear boxes. And they say this on the Yosemite National Park website. Rangers check that all the time and they will take the resupply out and throw it away. So you don't wanna do that because your resupply probably won't be in the bear box when you stroll through there trying to look for it. The second resupply point that you're going to hit heading southbound on the JMT is Red's Meadow. Red's Meadow is at mile marker 59.3 and it is the most convenient place on the JMT to be able to not just get your resupply, but also be able to get a nice hot meal if you want to stay at their cabins. It's kind of a little resort. Uh, there's also a camp store there. They have showers. So they have all of the hiking services that one would need when they are going to resupply and freshen up. 
So Red's Meadow, I stopped there. It was great. I mean, every single JMT through hiker or PCT through hiker is probably going to be stopping here at Red's Meadow. Now, Red's Meadow is directly off the trail, which makes this so convenient. Make sure if you're heading southbound that you take the second exit point because it literally is right there on the left-hand side. If you take the first one, it's probably about a half mile hike to get up into Red's Meadow. How the resupply works at Red's Meadow. You actually will send it to the Mammoth Lakes Post Office. Red's Meadow goes down and they pick up your resupply at Mammoth Lakes Post Office and then bring it back to Red's Meadow. The cost of this service to pick it up and to hold it at Red's Meadow is $40. You need to fill out a form that authorizes Red's Meadow to pick up your resupply at the post office. They'll use that form to show the post office. And then that is the time you also put your information on there to pay for the $40 charge that'll cost for your pickup at Red's Meadow. Now, because Red's Meadow is accessible by car, you can also have an option if you live around the area, you're gonna be driving through that area, you can drop it off at Red's Meadow if you're on your way north or south to start your through hike. And the cost will be $3 to hold it per day. And then you pay that when you pick it up. So if you're out there for 10 days, it takes you to get to Red's Meadow, then it's gonna cost you 30 bucks to pick up your package. So you can save a little bit of money and of course money with shipping as well. Now, one of the other options that you have to resupply here is to take the shuttle bus into Mammoth Lakes. Mammoth Lakes is a very popular ski town, but also means it's going to be expensive, especially if you're out there on a weekend and staying in Mammoth Lakes. But the cost of the shuttle, I think, is right around $7, and it runs whenever the area opens up. This year it was really late in 2017 because of all the snow. And then it runs through the Wednesday after Labor Day. So $7 and it will pick you up. It runs daily and is a great option if you want to go down into Mammoth Lakes. Now the third option that you have is to send your resupply to Vermilion Valley Resort, also known as VVR. Now the backdrop to VVR is it is not accessible to get to VVR Resort like Red's Meadow or Tuolumne Meadows. It's going to be a little bit of a jaunt. You have a couple different options to get to VVR. The first and most popular is to take their water ferry. They leave the resort at nine o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon every single day to drive hikers to and from the pickup point on the other side of Lake Edison. Now, to get to Lake Edison on the JMT, you will take the junction, which is at mile marker 88, heading southbound. It's a 1.5 mile hike to get to the ferry landing. Now, they're going to leave the landing at 9.45 each day and 4.45 p.m. So it's important that you know you need to be there beforehand so that you can get on that ferry and get back to VVR. Now, the second option is the option I took and one I would not recommend, which is actually walking around Lake Edison to get to VVR. Now, the nice thing about this is you are going to avoid having to pay the ferry fee of $13 to get to VVR. They also have round trip ferry fees of $23. So you save a few bucks if you do a round trip. Now, the total distance from that junction at mile marker 88 on the JMT to get to VVR is about seven miles. And the seven miles that goes around the lake is not flat. You're going to be ascending just over a thousand feet, total ascent over the entire seven miles. And honestly, I would have just taken the ferry. Now the last couple of options are for one northbounding, one southbounding option to avoid a part of the trail and just hike into VVR. For northbounders, you can take the Bear Ridge Trail, which is past Selden Pass and it is uh, actually not that bad of a trail. It's about five and a half miles from the junction of the JMT, taking the Bear Ridge down to the trailhead, and then an additional 1.5 mile road walk from that trailhead to VVR. And uh, heading northbound, going down that is going to be really mild. It's not bad at all, honestly. If you don't care about missing a portion of the PCT or JMT, now of course you could just turn around and take that way out climb back up the Bear Ridge if you want to hike every single mile. It's actually what I did when I left VVR. That's the way I took back up to get connected to the JMT. Now, the other option is for southbounders, you can skip Silver Pass and take Goodell Pass. It's a junction right before Silver Pass 
over Goodell, and then down into VVR. Now, in terms of the resupply cost, on their website, it states that in the months of May, September, and October, which is the slower months, they charge $65 for you to pick up the package at VVR. And then during the most popular months, which is June, July, and August, they charge $27. Now, one thing to note is I picked up my package sometime the middle to later part of September, and they only charged me $27. Now, you are going to be sending this package straight to VVR. You cannot send it to a PO. and needs to be sent through UPS or FedEx only. Now, in addition to the resupply options here at VVR, there's an outstanding hiker box there. When I was there, lots and lots of food. It was like the cornucopia of hiker boxes that I've seen. So they do have options here for you to be able to uh, scrounge through and scrape through a hiker box. And then they do have a smaller camp store. It's nowhere near as big as Red's Meadow or Tuolumne Meadows, but is a smaller camp store. And then of course, they do have a diner at VVR as well. Now the diner is open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The portion sizes are much larger than the other places that I was at, but was more expensive. There are accommodations here of a hostel. They basically have like eight mattresses in a tent that you can stay at. Uh, cost, I believe is about $15. I did it there and I slept great. Now they do have free camping at VVR. So you can go to VVR and you can stay on their premise, on their resort for free by camping in this designated spot. And that leads me to the fourth option of resupplying on the John Muir Trail, which is Muir Trail Ranch or MTR. This is the most popular because it is almost directly in the middle of JMT. So it makes it really easy for folks to be able to send the resupply because they're halfway done whether you are heading northbound or you're heading southbound. The location of MTR off the trail is also pretty darn convenient. If you are heading southbound, you take the first junction because there's two different junctions to get to MTR. It's about a mile hike. And the other junction, if you're heading northbound, is about a mile and a half. Now the downside of this is the cost of the resupply. The resupply bucket, no matter the time of year that you come to pick it up, is going to be $80. Now, in addition to the $80 cost to pick it up, you're only allotted 25 pounds for your entire resupply. Now, if you go over that 25 pounds, it's going to cost you $2 for every additional pound, and you have to send it in a bucket. You have to send it in a bucket because how they transport this. You send this to a post office, and then they have to transport it across a lake and on mule to get up to Muir Trail Ranch. So there is significant amount of resource to take this from the post office and get it to the ranch, which is why it costs so much money. Now, just like Red's Meadow, you have to pay for this resupply option in advance. There is a link. I'll put all the links I talk about, by the way, here below in the description box, but there's a link on their website that you'll click on, it'll take you to a portal, a secure portal for you to pay for the $80 resupply. Now, if it's higher than 25 pounds, heavier than 25 pounds, then the additional charge, they're going to charge you when you pick up your resupply at the ranch. Now, on the flip side of that, there is a free place to stay just past Muir Trail Ranch, right next to the river by the hot springs. Yes, there are hot springs there. So now you pass Muir Trail Ranch and the last two resupply points on the John Muir Trail are going to require you to have to hike up and over a pass off the trail and will be quite a few miles to get down into either the town of Bishop or the town of Independence. So heading southbound, Muir Trail Ranch and on is going to be difficult to get to a resupply point. And when I say difficult, just again, a lot of miles. Now heading northbound, coming from Mount Whitney, the first half of your journey, it's going to be the same. So these two options that you have, the first, which is again heading southbound, is to go over Bishop Pass. Bishop Pass is at mile marker 136.9. That's where the junction is. And this is a trek. One way to go up and over Bishop Pass, which 
looking at the profile is a pretty steep climb, is going to be somewhere between 12 to 13 miles just one way. So getting into the town of Bishop is going to require you to make a round trip hike of 26 miles. So know that going into Bishop, it is the less popular of these two exit points on the last half of the trail. If you do get off, you decide to go over Bishop Pass, you'll get to the trailhead, and then you need to find a hitch into Bishop. Depending on the time of year, and whether it's a weekday or weekend, I heard it could be difficult and might not be the best option of being able to get a hitch, but that is an option. Now, the town of Bishop has a ton of places to resupply. It's a nice, huge mountain town. Now, if you do decide to take Bishop Pass and go into Bishop, I would definitely recommend taking a zero at Bishop because there's just so much stuff to do there and it's a cool little town. Which brings me to the last practical exit point on the JMT to get a resupply or the first if you're heading northbound. And that is at mile marker 179.4 to 180. There's actually three different junctions that was going to head to Onion Valley. To get to Onion Valley, you are going to hike over Kearsarge Pass. And as you kind of see here, there's a theme to be able to get off of the JMT at any exit point, you have to go over a mountain pass. Now, the mileage for this is somewhere between 7.5 to 9 miles. On gut hooks, they say that it's 9 miles, but I've seen pictures on the trail that said 7.5 miles from the junction to Onion Valley, but it's somewhere in that range. And this is a pretty popular option for PCT hikers, JMT hikers, to get off and go into the town of Independence and resupply. Now, when you get into Onion Valley, you have to hitch into Independence, which is a more practical hitch than going out of the Bishop trailhead from what I've read and what I've researched. And going into the town of Independence, there's a post office there, and your most viable and practical resupply is to just send a resupply to that post office. Independence is a very small mountain town. It does not have a lot of options to resupply and it might be more practical if you get into independence and you do want to resupply, you don't want to send a resupply to the post office, is to take the bus line up to Bishop. It will cost $7 and it will either go up to Bishop or it can go down to Lone Pine. And then the next day you could take it back. Now outside of these six options that I mentioned, there are some other options that you have that aren't as practical. Uh, the first is to actually hire packers. So you can hire a horse packer that will come in and meet you and drop your food at some point on the JMT. I've heard the cost of that could be as much as $350, maybe even more depending on what you're bringing in, but it's a lot of money. And for most of us, it's probably not gonna be really practical. The other option is if you have friends that live in the area and you can talk them into it, they could hike in at one of the JMT exit points all the way up over the pass and meet you on the JMT, or you can meet on top of the pass and be able to get your resupply. So those are a couple other things that you could do depending on if you have the resources. Now, as for recommendations, I did my one and only resupply to VVR and it actually worked out really well for me, especially because it was only $27, which is the cheapest paid resupply that you have on the trail. Now, there are a couple of things, depending on really how many miles that you're going to be going. You're going to be stopping at Red's Meadow anyway, but VVR, especially you know if you're going during that peak time, I would recommend going to VVR. You'll love VVR and doing your resupply there instead of Red's Meadow. Uh, this gives you an opportunity. You can, uh, you know, if you do Tuolumne Meadows at mile marker 23, you have about 60 miles or so, 65 miles between Tuolumne Meadows and VVR for your next resupply. So if you can make that, uh, then that is what I would do. And you could just stop at Red's Meadow, grab dinner, grab breakfast on the next day on your way out. And if you need to, you can grab some things at the camp store. Now in terms of MTR, most hikers are going to go to Muir Trail Ranch and do a resupply. It makes sense, it's halfway. The reason why I didn't was just because of the cost associated with MTR 
and I knew that it was going to be closed. MTR closed the year that I hiked the JMT about uh, the middle of September, and I didn't get to MTR until closer to the third week into September. So there was no need for me to go there if I wasn't picking up a resupply bucket. The hiker box at MTR is supposed to be the best along the entire trail. MTR, again, viable option, and if it's open, definitely recommend going out to MTR. Now in terms of resupplying it at MTR, if you can resupply at BBR, and be able to make it to Kearsarge and not have to go to MTR, it's gonna save you a lot of money. And if I did, or when I do the JMT again, that's probably what I'm going to do. I know I can do the miles, and I'd like to go over Kearsarge this time. I did not go over Kearsarge. I just did my last resupply at VVR, and I just went the last 120 or so miles off of one resupply. So it really depends on the mileage that you are going to be doing but you can save some big money if you avoid that resupply bucket at MTR. But you know, overall, there's lots of different options that you can do here, and it just really depends on how many miles that you really can do or are willing to do, because then you'll be able to plot out really what resupply options will make sense. Well guys, that wraps up my video of resupplying on the John Muir Trail. If you have any questions about the logistics of any of the resupplies, or anything for that matter, please put them below. I'll do my best to be able to answer them. Or if others that have done this can be able to answer, then we can do that as well. Remember to always follow Bigfoot.